Good. President, please be seated. The court is now back in session, and I would like to give the floor to the lead co-lawyer for civil party to resume questioning the civil party. Thank you, Mr. President. Now I continue my question to Madam Kansantara. Madam Kansantara, I have a number of questions to put to you. This morning I asked you about your husbands who were arrested and your children who died. In your civil party application, you described that you had a brother, Yim Lang, and Aum Yin Dani, and uh, your niece. Can you tell the chamber what happened to them and how did you feel? Answer. My brother was an engineer graduating from Techno during the first batch. When he was evicted, he was evicted to Koh Krabai, and later on, he was sent back to the city to Psato. I received the news about him through his friends who met him. They told me that my brother was still alive. He was sent back to Phnom Penh. I was hopeful to hear that because I thought that at least my brother would survive. But after 1979, I heard the news that my brother was killed at Tool Slang. It was at dinner time that I received such a news. My tears dropped down and my heart kept pounding upon hearing the news. I walked about 11 kilometers to arrive at the provincial center of Kampung Spu and I uh, hitchhiked on a track to Tool Slang. And my friend uh, accompanied me to see the photos being displayed at Tool Slang. But I did not see my two nieces who were adopted by him and brought along with him to Phnom Penh. I felt shocked because my brother was a very sweet brother. He took care of us well, and he liked musical instruments. So at the time when I heard the musical instrument, the sound from musical instruments, my tears came out and I was very sorrowful for him. Whenever I thought of other people's brother, I thought about my own brothers. I felt, I have felt suffered until nowadays. Question. Related to your brother, uh, sorry, uh, related to your Sister-in-law, is her name Aum Yen Doni or Aum Yen Dori? Could you uh, question, could you repeat your answer? Answer, her name is Aum Yen Doni. Question. Now, my question is about your parents. What happened to them during the DK regime or during the Khmer Rouge regime? Answer. My father went to work along with other eldermen in the village. One day in 1977, probably in February, 
of the year. The aldermen were gathered up and sent to cut the bamboo trees. My, bra my, my father brought along with him a cattle, but he has disappeared since then. Question, what about your mother? What happened to her? Answer, my mother died of illness. But before her death, she felt sick for a long time at the work site, and they did not send her to the hospital. When my mother was sent to the hospital, it was at the time when I took my two sick children to the district hospital. When one of my child died, and I walked past the commune hospital, I met her. I met her only once, and we spent about one or two hours uh, with each other. I showed my dead child to her, and I have never received any more news from her since then. I learned from other people that she died, and I could not ask permission from Onka to go and see my mother because they said that I, I was not a medic. And if I went to see her, I could not help her anyway, and it wasted the time for work. Question. So beside your parents, were there any siblings of yours who disappeared or who were taken away to be killed? Answer. My brother-in-law, who was a professor at Jumpu One School, in April 1977, one evening at the uh, work site, he called him out. He asked him, Tol, don't you have any more tobacco? You should go to get tobacco. And they used a scarf to tie him up. And I learned about his arrest through his friends who had a, f a wife working with me. And she told me that my brother-in-law were taken away to be killed. I wept and I was, and I was sick. And my sister uh, told me not to cry. And my mother wept when she learned about the news that one of her child now disappeared. Council, Pre Mr. President, because uh, I, I would like to get your permission to display the document of uh, Madame Con Satira Brothers is E3 slash 8607. The document is about the names of prisoners who were brought from Takmau. President, court officers, uh, please display the documents on the screen. Council, Madame Kan Sotera, here's the name Jim Lang, who was based at Sato and he was an electric engineer. Have you ever seen this document? Answer, yes, I have seen this document. In the book that listed the names of those who were killed at Tools Line Prison. Council, Mr. President, I would like to display two more documents. It's E3 slash one, zone, zone, six and one with E on number 
It only exists in Khmer language. President, every unit officer display the document on the screen. Council, the document has only two documents. Another document is E3 slash 90. Which English uh, EO number zero one zero zero ninety nine sixty one through zero zero rather zero one zero zero ninety one. Correction, uh, 9961. President, every unit officer display the document on the screen. Council, Madam Councilor, this is the name of Aonjin Dori. That's why I asked you earlier whether the name was Aonjin Dori or Aonjin Doni. Answer, the name is Aonjin Doni. When I saw in the book, it was written Aum Yen Doni. Council, thank you. Because another document also contained the pictures that I received. I received this document from Madame Kan Sutra. Mr. President, could I also uh, have this document displayed? President, I would like to seek opinions from other parties whether uh, you think that the party should be the shown to the civil party. Defense counsel for Kiu Sompon, I think the, this, the document can, can be displayed, but it should be given the identification number. Defense uh, civil party lawyers, the document mentioned that it's about the biographies of the detainees. The document is D22 slash 18 slash 5, and the EON number is 0021408. English EON is 023 40 In French, 0028. 9730. It's about the names of Aum Yen Doni. Her biography at S21. Madame Civil Party, uh, do you have uh, those photos? Could I uh, give these photos to her, President? Court officer, please show the photos to her. Council, can you confirm with us that this is really the photos of your brothers? Answer, yes, it was the photo of my brother. Question. Now my question is about your feeling. After you learned about the loss of Jim Lang and your sister-in-law and your parents and your siblings who, were, who, who died, how did you feel at that time? 
answer. I I missed them all very much. It was still a freshing memory to me. I still uh, thought of my parents. When I saw elder people going to pagodas, I thought of my parents. All my siblings were innocent and sweet people. And when I saw other people's children, I also thought of my own children. And the children of the people I saw, they had their, their own children. So whenever I thought of my own children, my tears came out. Whenever I feel sick, no one take care of me. And I always remember about such a, an evolved regime. Council, thank you. After, after you survived the regime, Do you have any illness as a result of your psychological uh, trauma? Answer. Because I had small children during the regime and they used me to engage in intensive labor to dig canal. I was required to dig three cubic meter of uh, earth in one day. And at night time, they also uh, require me to work. And when I was sick, I asked for permission to have a rest, but they did not allow. So that, that caused illness to me until now. I had a stomach cage until now. And there was rashes on my body, and they did not allow me to uh, to get out of the paddy fields. So up until now, I my legs are still uh, are still soaring, and up until now, they, I have still received the treatment as a result of the illness that caused from that regime. Council, I have no more questions to put to you, Mr. President. President, thank you, uh, lead caller of the Civil Party. Now I give the floor to the co-prosecutors to put questions to the Civil Party. Merci, Monsieur le Président. And you have 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Civil Party. I have uh, several questions to ask you on behalf of the prosecution. First, concerning the members of your family who were arrested or who disappeared but were not brought to S21. So I'm talking about your father, Khan Bhatt, first of all. What was your father's occupation before the 17th of April, 1975? And did he work under the Lonol regime in Phnom Penh? Before 1975, my father was a custom officer. He was a custom officer affiliated with the water department. Co correction with the taxation office. After uh, 1975, uh, did he change positions and can you tell us what he did before? In suitable commune that I lived, he did not reveal that he 
about his job in his biography, but because he was a male, uh, I can say that many men were taken away to study, especially the new men, except the, the base people. Do you know if the Khmer Rouge were able to find out or found out the, about the past occupation of your father as a civil ser servant? Do you have any information on that? Or do you not know if the Khmer Rouge knew about that? No, I, I did not know. They did not know, but still they took my father away. Concerning M. Toll, your brother-in-law, you said that he had been a teacher at the Chun Phu Vong High School and at the uh, Buddhist High School. Do you know why he was arrested and executed by the Khmer Rouge? He was an innocent person and he gave an innocent answer that he was a professor. But at my place, even the vegetable growers were also taken away. And Yun Puch, your husband, when he was arrested in September 1977? Did you find out for exactly what reason he was arrested? No, I did not know the specific reason behind his arrest because we live separately. He worked at the mobile unit while I was with my sick children at the hospital. We were separated from each other, and we did not see each other for about one month. Did you learn later if he had been considered an enemy of the regime? Yes, before they arrested us, they usually accused us of being enemy. I heard that he was arrested and sent to be uh, tempered at Kohko. I learned the account from those who came from Kohko that on the, in, in January 1979, they closed the office and they threw the grenade inside that office. That's why I thought that all of them who were inside were probably killed. I would like to read what you said in E3 slash 4671, your civil party application. It's at 00. 250788 in French, in Khmer, 1395, and in English, 00239762. And I quote, in the month of November 1977, my family, who was only my sister, and myself, two nieces and I, along with uh, other widows whose husbands had been killed were taken by the Khmer Rouge organization to Kotokville in the same district, Sang district. This was a site for re-education of widows and their children. I and the other wives were considered to be wives of the enemy that the organization had smashed and we were treated like prisoners, end quote. What did you mean that you were considered prisoners as wives 
of enemies. What were your conditions in Kotokville? What were your living conditions? Yes. It was late 1977 when I was sent to Kohko. There were many women and children whose husband had been taken away. They said that we were related to the enemy. So when we arrived at that island, they forced us to do heavy work. So they deprived us of our food and forced us to work hard. They gave us only the watery porridge. And there were many people died at that place, including children and elder people. They accused us of being the wives of the enemy. You said that you had no more news of the two children of your brother Chem Lang and his wife. You said that those were adopted children. So you had no more news at that time. Did you at any time later reestablish contact or did you see these children again? No, I have never met them. I tried to search for their photo at Tours Lang. I went to Tours Lang three times, but I did not find their photos. And even the photos of my sister-in-law and brother also disappear. I saw them during my two trips there, but during the third trip, I did not find their photos. In the document that the civil party presented, D22-18-5, the biography of Om Yen Doni. It is indicated that he entered S21, that means Tuo Slang, from S21D on the 8th of November 1976. Does this period of November 76 correspond to the period when your brother and sister-in-law disappeared, or were they arrested well before that time? So we're talking here about November 1976. Were they arrested then, or had they been arrested well before that? I knew beforehand that they would be taken to Psato, but I did not know when they were sent to Tuol's line. Only after the regime collapsed, I learned from uh, my brother's father-in-law, who said that they were sent to Tuol's line. And later on, I went to Tuol's line, and I saw about the dates that they were brought into Tuol's line, and the dates were recorded, recorded in the book. In order to really establish correctly this date, there's a document that we haven't heard of before, E3-8607. This is a list from S21 entitled Prisoners to be Taken to the Electricity Segment of Van Trau, 20 February 1976. So in English, it's on 01303367. And the name of your brother is on the next page. So in Khmer, it's on 00088716. Does this shock you that he was transferred from Trakao as of 20 February 1976, which is towards the beginning of the Khmer Rouge regime. Uh, 
Yes, I have seen it. I was surprised. They were brought into the prison in February. So during that duration of uh, during, during the months that they were there, they were tortured. I thought that my brother would have been tortured at Tool's line. Whenever I taught my student about the regime, and my tears came out, I only learned about their deaths at the prison only after the regime collapsed in 1979. Yeah, young. There are other documents on the case file, but there's one document that um, might uh, interest the chamber as well as you. It's document E3-3187 because it mentions the execution date of Omdin Boni. And this is a table that is titled uh, List of Prisoners Who Were Executed Between 1 November 1976 and 15 November 1976, and uh, we can find the reference at Khmer page 0000 8844, and English on page 0087-4397. Uh, this table uh, is uh, also copied a bit further in Om in Denise name is also found on page 0087-4404 in English. And therefore, at entry number 17, we can see the name of your sister-in-law. And we say it, it is indicated that she came from S21D, probably Presar, therefore, and that she was Chim Lung's wife, who was an ele electricity worker at Plant 1, entry date 8 November 1976. Execution date, the next day, 9 November 1976, therefore. End of quote. So, did you know that your sister-in-law was also considered as a person working for the electricity department as your brother? No, I was not aware of that. However, I knew that uh, from what I uh, read, she was kept for one night, and next day she was executed. As for my other brother, they kept him for several months, and he was subject to severe torture. He was questioned whether he was a part of a CIA network. But for my other sister-in-law, they did not torture her much because he was there only for one night. Merci, Madame. Thank you, Civil Party. We have no further questions for you. Thank you, Deputy Co-Prosecutor. I now hand the floor to the Defense Counsel for Anun G. If you have question to put to the Civil Party, and you have 15 minutes. We have no questions, uh, Your Honor. And what about Keith and Pons Counsel? On, thank you, Mr. Uh, President. The defense team for Kiel and Pond do not have any question for this civil party. President, thank you, Counsel. And Madam Counsel towards the conclusion of your testimony, do you ha wish to make any uh, statement or do you have any questions that you wish to put to the accused through me, the President of the Trial Chamber? If you wish to do so, you may proceed. Civil Party. 
As for the hand and suffering I suffered under the regime, I still feel so offensive so by what happened. I felt so lonely, and uh, the pain remains uh, with me. And I'd like to ask the accused the uh, question about uh, my father, my elder brothers, and uh, my younger brother and siblings, why they had to uh, kill them all in such a way. That is my first question. And my second question is the following. Why those uh, senior leaders are covered and can they, uh, they are not to be responsible for such mass killings? These are my questions, as your honor. And Mr. President, may I also make a request? President, and uh, what request do you wish to make, Madam Civil Party? Civil Party. In Kampong Spu province where I live, at Pope Phnom Pagoda, there are skeleton remains and skulls which are stored in a stupa. However, the stupa is uh, getting very old and we should have it uh, rebuilt or refurbished so that uh, those skeleton remains can uh, be stored. And I also like to build a library there to store archive documents related to the Khmer Rouge regime so that young generations can study and understand about the past. Because uh, the young generations find it very difficult to believe what happened. And every time I receive the documents from the DK regime, I show to those uh, young children so that they understand it. President and Madame Civil Party, the Chamber wishes to inform you that so far, the accused uh, are still exercising their right to remain uh, silent. And the chamber is grateful of your uh, testimony, Madame Civil Party, Gan Sotara, regarding the harms that you claim you suffered under the Democratic Cambodia regime in relation to S21 Security Center. It is now concluded and you may be excused. <coughs> the Chamber now proceeds to hear the statement of harm and suffering of another civil party. That is to TCCP 1050. And the court officer, please ask the civil party to TCCP 1050, as well as Bun Kim Hu, the TPO staff, into the courtroom.
President, good afternoon, Mr. Civil Party. What is your name? And uh, Mr. Civil Party, please uh, observe the uh, microphone before you respond. Chief Civil Party, my name is Jiao Kum. President, thank you. And when were you born? Answer. I was born on 18 May 1938. Question, where is your current residence? Answer, I lived in my nephew's uh, House. However, I also reside in France. Questioned. And what are the names of your parents? Answer. My father is Chao San, and my mother is Nian Khan. Both are deceased. And Mr. Bun Lum Hu, please adjust the microphone so that he can see the red light on the tip of uh, the microphone. Question, how many children do you have? Answer, I have one son and one daughter. President Mr. Chao Kim, as a civil party in the proceedings before this chamber, you may make a statement of times and uh, sufferings related to the uh, crimes alleged against the two accused, Nguyen Chi and Kiu Sam Pond, and which happened during the period of the Mugati Kamjiu regime, and which resulted in your civil party application to claim collective and moral reparations from the accused for physical material or mental injuries as direct consequences of those crimes. And the chamber hands the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties to put questions to this uh, civil party. Um, good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. With your permission, I see the floor to Council Gumming Key to put questions to this civil party. Welcome. Thank you. President, lawyer for civil parties, you have the floor. Gumming Key, thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours, everyone in and around the courtroom. My name is Kum Ming Ki. I am one of the lawyers from the uh, Lawyers of Without a Border in France. And I am also a civil party uh, lawyer for this civil party since case zero zero one. And I have some questions to put to the civil party. And my first question to you is the following Mr Civil Party. What is your appealing what is your uh, feeling like uh, when you think of uh, what happened uh, during the democratic Cambodia regime? Answer. Good afternoon, everyone. And good afternoon, Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Prosecutors all the victims and everyone who is following the trial proceedings at this stage. Today, I am honored 
to be uh, called by the uh, trial uh, chamber in the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia to make my statement of harm and uh, suffering for the uh, loss of my father, my two siblings, as well as uh, my other brother, Chao Sei, during the genocidal regime of the Khmer Rouge. The main uh, sufferings that I received uh, are the result of the loss of my uh, father, who was 76 year go years old, who had uh, high blood pressure and died. And it was also compounded by intensive work and uh, lack of food. He died in Kampong Chirai district. As for my two siblings, Chao Jun and Ning Kum Van, they were members of a mobile unit, and I did not know where uh, they died. And uh, they died probably in late 1976. As for Chao Seng, he returned to his uh, country back in December 1975 from overseas. He came along with uh, other Khmer expatriates. And by July 1976, Onka let him write a letter to his wife so that she could also return to the country. He was then sent to the East Zone, that is to Suwung District, in August 1976. He was sent to the economic uh, section under the supervision of the Ministry of uh, Public Affairs foreign affairs, and Wan Pini was in charge. Hao Nam Hong and Saburi were members. In February 77, he arrived at K-16 in Bang Trok Bay, and Onka educated them to change their old habit and to transform themselves to the habit of the regime. based on the order from a purport. Chao Sein was arrested, and this is based on Deutsche Confession, as well as in his uh, document. Purport ordered his arrest in November 1977, and at S21, his name was changed to Chen Sun, and uh, that uh, appeared on the list. It's because uh, Chao Sein was an, a famous person, and that was to conceal his uh, real identity. Deutsche kept him alive and provided him sufficient food and accommodation. Duj wanted to pay uh, gratitude to him, and that is uh, what Duj uh, stated. During his two years' uh, detention, that is until February 78, the Rouge forced him to write uh, two confessions, totaling 200 uh, pages, before Nunji ordered him uh, to be smashed. And this is based on the uh, uh, document, the surviving document. I, the great loss of my other brother, Chao Se, as well as my father, means the loss of core people in my uh, family. And we suffered greatly uh, from such loss, and nothing can compare to our loss. We lost uh, our hope, we lost our future, and we did not have uh, someone who would be in charge of our family. As for a uh, child saying's uh, family, his wife was uh, a French woman, and uh, they had children, and she still refused to accept the death of her husband, Chao Seng. Her suffering could not be described in words. 
as for the nation, the loss of Chao Se is a loss of a, an intellectual who loved the nation and who was an elite, a progressive person who participated actively in the building of a society during the Sankum Rihnijum from 1956 to 1968. And uh, your honors, I, I would like to provide a brief biography of my other uh, brother as follows. He was born in 1929 in Kampuchi Kraum. And he came to study in Phnom Penh and further uh, he studied in France in 1948. He received a, a degree in French literature And also he received uh, his uh, degree in uh, psychology and pedagogy. In 1956-1957, he was a professor at a pedagogical school. And in 1958, he was a chief of a cabinet and later on became an MP in Phnom Penh and deputy uh, president of the National Assembly between 1958 to 60. He was the state secretary of the Ministry of Education and from 60 to 62, he was a uh, minister of uh, propaganda. And from 62 to 64, he was a uh, minister of uh, commerce from 64 to 66, he was the chief of cabinet of the Samdaisianu uh, in his uh, state uh, office capacity. In 1967, he was vice senior of the uh, Ministry of Commerce and Economics. And from 58 to 62, and from 62 to 66, he became an MP for the second uh, mandate. He was also a, an editor in a number of uh, newspapers, including the National List, the Sangkum Kampuchi, and the Sangkum Rihnijum newspaper. He was also chairperson of uh, the Journalist and Press Association. And from 68 to 70, he fled to France due to a threat from Lunol. And from 20 to 75, he was, he was minister in charge of the uh, uh, special commission, special uh, missions of the uh, Grung under the leadership of uh, Sambak Sihanu. And on 14 December, he returned to Cambodia to rebuild the country as his uh, blood uh, younger brother the arbitrary killing of my other brother gave us so much pain. I tried to seek for the truth everywhere. From the day uh, Vietnamese came to take control of uh, Kampuji, I asked his acquaintances who survived, namely Yen Put Saki, Sao Kum Hong, and General Duong Sam Ong, Kum Kun, who used to live with him in Bang Tro Baek, who told me that one day while he was picking morning glory, a jeep arrived, and he was taken away in that jeep, and nobody dared to ask where he was uh, taken to. They thought that he would be taken to work at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with Yen Sari. And in 1982, when Yen came on a, a mission to France, who informs uh, the Khmer overseas about the uh, domestic situation, I sought permission to speak to Yen regarding the disappearance of my elder brother. 
he told me that at Bang Trop Bai, people were put into three groups, those former embassy staff, former students, and former public servants. And he says that amongst those people in the three groups, Onka assigned Van Kadre Uk Savon to uh, be in charge. And one day, Chi San Trung Metuvi and the people started uh, disappearing, including Von Pini. Then he uh, called the uh, person in charge, Savon, to, uh, to uh, give him uh, the answer and he said that uh, the person were killed, they were sent to kill at Jamka Lu, but the truth is they were sent to S21. Later on, he said Savon was an infiltrated enemy uh, planted uh, by the enemy in order to kill the intellectuals. And as a result, later on, Savon was taken away and executed. Due to the disappearance of uh, former uh, embassy staff, uh, Savon was questioned about the disappearances. And later on, he ordered those uh, embassy staff to be returned. And as I said, he said that uh, Savon was uh, an agent uh, infiltrated by the enemy. And before the arrival of the uh, Vietnamese into Cambodia, Savon was arrested and killed by the Khmer Rouge. And finally, I'd like to make a request to the uh, trial chamber to ask uh, Nguyen Chi's quest questions why he ordered Dutch to kill my other uh, brother, Chao Sei. What was uh, his mistake? What did he wrong uh, to the uh, Khmer Rouge? And I'd like to ask Kiu some porn why the Khmer Rouge killed uh, intellectuals or expat expatriates who returned to the, uh, Cambodia to build uh, the country. And from Hong Tong Hương, an author of uh, I Believe the Khmer Rouge, said that people who came from France and the United States and who uh, died at Bang Trop Bay were 277. Thank you, Mr. President. Bye. Council, uh, thank you, Mr. Civil Party, for your uh, rather detailed uh, statement in relation to the uh, events that you experienced. And I'd like to uh, focus on one uh, particular uh, point. And of course, you are here mainly as a result of the uh, great loss of your other brother, that is uh, Chao Seng. You said that you have uh, tried to search for the truth everywhere. And of course, uh, you've been here since Kaiser uh, 001. And for that reason, I focus my uh, questions on this point regarding your attempts to uh, receive some information from this case as well as from the previous case. So can you uh, tell the Chamber what you have learned so far in relation to your other brother, Chao Seng, and his uh, contact with the Khmer Rouge regime and the result uh, that led him uh, to being executed uh, during the regime? answer. Thanks to the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, I received uh, uh, a lot of information because I have tried uh, many, many places to search for his information and I looked for Chao Se's name at uh, S21, but uh, it was not there. 
and only uh, later when the testified on 19 August 2009, and said that Chao Seng's name was changed at S21 to Chan Soon. And I tried to uh, search for that information, and then I came across the 300-page confessions. And the Khmer Rouge accused him of not involving in the, the revolution since he was a student until the time that uh, he uh, worked in collaboration with uh, some like Sihanou for over a period of 10 years, and that he never thought of uh, the revolution involvement. He was accused of uh, being a secret agent for France, for CIA, and there was no such evidence to prove it at all. I did not know why the uh, Khmerus had such a uh, revenge against him. And that is uh, also a question that I like to put to Nuchi and Kim Sung Pong. What my other brother Chao Seng did that led him to being killed? Question. I would like you to talk about the relationship of your brother Chao Seng with the leaders of Khmer Rouge and Samdak Sihanou. After the coup d'etat, what was the relationship of him with Khmer Rouge leaders and with Samdak Sihanou? Do you know any details about this? Answer, I know clearly because I followed since he left Cambodia for France in 1968. He stopped doing politics because over there in Paris, he focused on his study because when he left, the right wing won the election so he could not stay. That's why he left for France. And after the coup took place in 1970, some died by Nut, who came from Montpellier, came, asked him to come back to struggle against the Lunal. And he contributed a lot to the Khmer Rouge movement because he went to various countries to speak on behalf of the movement in Latin America, in Africa. And he asked those countries to recognize the movement. So he made a lot of contributions to the movement but no one understood why the Khmer Rouge killed the intellectuals. And such questions kept, were, were asked until nowadays. Why the Khmer Rouge killed the intellectual people who, who committed no wrongdoing? My apology. They were brought in and killed. The, the Khmer Rouge did not know the value of their knowledge. For example, those who study engineering. Thank you. Question. Thank you. Could I 
put more questions to you, or you need some time for a break? Question. Do you know whether Chao Seng had any disagreement or conflict with any Khmer Rouge leaders, in particular about the ways the regime left the country? Answer. When he worked in Sangkum Rihnijum, when he was the Secretary General, he never had any conflict against the Khmer Rouge. He defended Hu Nam Hu Yun and Kiu Sampon. Those people were accused and he, he said that the accusation was baseless. Chao Seng had never had any conflict with the Khmer Rouge. If he had any conflict with the Khmer Rouge, he would not have returned to help them rebuild the country. He came back and to, to help the Khmer Rouge to gain victory on the 17th April 1975. Question. I would like to quote your writing, which was written in your application. You wrote that your brother was an intelligent person he was a progressive person. He was a, pat a patriotic person. And he determined to serve the country. He loved justice. My brother should not have died in such a worthless way. He came back to help the country, but instead he was unexpectedly killed. He should not have died along with other intellectuals in such a tragic way. End of quote. I, I quoted this statement because I would like to ask you a question. So how did you uh, intend to portray your feeling that you uh, mentioned that the good people were killed? Answer. My answer is like the following. Chao Seng was probably uh, envied by other people. He was not a communist. He was a, gro a progressivist. Dutch was also aware of this because Dutch was his student. In 1960 to 68, he was a very famous person. His, his, he was widely known. Chao Seng was not a partisan person. He was simply a very uh, effective person, very knowledgeable person who uh, came from France because he got educated in France in the 1940s. He has been he had been ministers for ten years, and he contributed a lot. And it was like what they testified that he contributed a lot to the educations of professors and teachers in the country. And when he was the, in charge of the agriculture, he also contributed a lot. He was not a corrupt person. Because initially, surrounding the Samdai were the feudalist people. But 
when he joined the team, he tried to clear to clear out of this. Many people loved him during the regime, and his, he was widely known. He was known to be a patriotic person, and it's difficult to find such a person in that regime. He, he helped a lot. He helped the Khmer Rouge. He, when he was the minister, he helped kill some pawn. But the people in the right wing were not happy with this. He was not, he was not an ambitious person. Because when we came from Cambodia Crown, we were, we were not from the family of the elite. So that's why I try to find justice for him to, to pay my gratitude to him. And my, my brothers uh, were encouraged by him to, to work hard, to study hard in France. Question. I have my last question. And then I will give the floor to my colleague to continue other questions. So, how do you want the Khmer Rouge leaders who were uh, related in this case to be responsible for the loss of your family members? Answer. For me, many Khmer Rouge leaders already passed away, including Ying Seri. There were there are only two alive, and they should they should cooperate and answer because the Cambodian society nearly disappear. The Breaking in the society is so, so much between the rich and the poor. The Khmer Rouge need to be responsible for what they committed during the regime. And I would like Nguyen Chia and Kiel Sampon to confess and to give us the answers why they killed the intellectuals. They did not do anything wrong, but they were taken away to be killed in such a way. So the two surviving senior leaders needed to be responsible. President, lead civil party lawyers, you have no time left. It is now convenient time for a break and we will take a 15 minutes break from now.